there, it's Reagan. Before we get started with today's episode, I have a quick message for you. I want you to know that it's never too early to start with proper bookkeeping for your business. This has been my first year of business in 2022, and I really tried to make myself as accessible as possible to everyone that needs help with this aspect of running their business. With that being said, I'm going to be making some changes in 2023 that will allow to allow me to serve my clients better and create more value for them. The first thing that will be changing is that my prices are going to go up for my bookkeeping services, but that's not until January 1st, 2023. I'm releasing this podcast episode in December of 2022, and if you're interested in working with me and want to take advantage of my introductory rate, you have until December 31st, 2022 to schedule a free consult with me and explore your options. It's a savings of 63% for the base price of monthly bookkeeping services. My services right now are based on the scope of your accounting work, but starting in January, it's gonna be one price and that will be all inclusive for all business sizes. And that is truly gonna give me the space to do my work and help my clients grow their businesses. So if you would like to learn more about my bookkeeping system that I use for all of my clients, you can schedule a free 30 minute consultation call with me. The link to access my calendar is alleaseaccounting.as.me forward slash consult. I can't wait to meet you. Now, on with the rest of the episode. I want to talk to you today about my story. Why do I do what I do? Because I'm really fucking good at accounting, and let's be honest, I'm a millennial woman, so unless I'm good at something, I'm not going to do it. I do it quickly and efficiently. It's accurate when I do it. I've created a lot of great systems for myself and my clients. I'm good at and actually enjoy writing procedures. And I like teaching my clients how to read their reports and actually make use of their data. Listen, every business has to have some form of record keeping. I've talked in previous episodes about how we're operating under this capitalist system. And in order to get anywhere in it, we're gonna have to play the game to an extent. Like filing taxes. You gotta do it. It's the law. We're required to report to the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, how much money we make each year. And then pretty much everything else in our life is defined by what we tell them. Housing, whether it's renting or buying property, getting a loan for property or to buy a car. And in order order to pay less for any debt, meaning to get a better financing rate and paying less interest, We need to have good credit, which can be in part based on how much money we make and the fact that people who make more money can usually afford to pay off their loans without missed or late payments. So this is just the deal, and we don't have to like it to accept that until things change, but this is how we're operating right now, okay? So if we can agree on that, then that makes record keeping important. Tracking your income and expenses all year long so you don't forget the time that you bought the office lunch and you paid cash and you didn't ask for a receipt so that when it's time to file your tax return in the spring, your records are actually up kept and filing is easy for you or your preparer. So once we've accepted why it's important to do good record keeping, hopefully you'll care a little or a lot about maintaining those records. It might as well be accurate, right? You're Your reports may as well empower you with some knowledge in the meantime, like understanding the the ebbs and flows of your business, whether you have seasons of feast or famine, and looking inward to be creative and making more steady streams of revenue. Otherwise, running a business may as well be a big waste of your time. And your time is valuable. If you didn't have time, you wouldn't be out here making making your thing or serving your people. It's not about maximizing your time either because that is very much tied into the capitalist puritanical concept of everything, every cent of every profit must be squeezed out of this limited resource, which is time. But what we're not gonna do is ignore the data or not care enough to track the numbers and then wonder why we don't get the results we want or expect at the end of the day. I want to support you in whatever stage of your business you're in. If you're starting up, I have resources that offer consulting. I will train you and help you develop systems and procedures to manage your business. And if you're already established, but it's quickly gotten away from you, we can wrangle it back into submission together by simply getting things cleaned up. You know how you walk into a room you never go in that just kind of collects things that don't have a place 
And when you first turn on the light, you're horrified by all that you find and it's overwhelming. That's usually where I first meet people. It might be terrifying for you, but I've got you. This, I've done this many times before and we can get it under control quickly and without much drama. <laughs> One thing I want people to understand that I see a lot of accountants or financial advisors recommending is looking at your reports. I'm gonna do a full episode um, going in depth about the different types of reports we use in general accounting, but most people recommend looking at your profit and loss statement, the balance sheet, and your cash flow reports. None of these are the quote most important one to look at, in my opinion, but it is important that you have time set aside to review them in depth once a month. If you have a bookkeeper, they should be providing you these reports at a minimum or you should have access to your data where you can pull them frequently. We've talked about time management and prioritizing your tasks in your business. Well, financial review is definitely up there in those priorities for everybody. How can you exercise your agency over your business, which is essentially the decision-making process, if you don't have accurate data to review? This is where my services are aligned with my values. So one of my closely held values personally and professionally is accountability. I define this as being subject to answer to something or have an obligation to report, explain, or justify something. Accountability as a value is kind of recursive in that anyone who has values should feel accountable to them. <clears throat> we should consider most, if not all of our decisions from the lens of our values and therefore be accountable to ourselves. Another value I have is education, or the result of knowing that I will never know everything and pursuing knowledge anyways by using reason and judgment. So you can see how being accountable to and educating myself comes from reading my financials. I try and walk my talk when it comes to accurate record keeping and regularly reviewing my money situation. I'm educating myself on my own best practices and also answering the question of whether I'm living in alignment with my values and on track to meet my goals, all just from looking at my reports consistently. And I teach my clients how to do this too. When we set up your books or do a big cleanup job, we look at whether your accounting even speaks to you and your business. Do you know what is being categorized here and why? Is the bookkeeping missing crucial information like expenses on a personal credit card, the balance of a business loan, or assets like office equipment? Unless your reports are in the language you use every day, and I don't mean like English or otherwise, but using the terms that are applicable to what you do and sell, your financials may not even make sense or have any context. That's the waste of time we talked about earlier. The goal for me with my people is to provide them with accurate reports, to ask questions about their business and personal lives so that they're empowered with data. I watched a TED Talk, and this was years ago, but it truly stuck with me. A TED Talk by Talithia Williams, a, stati a statistician and data expert, where she discusses the importance of not only having data inform you, but having a lot of it over a period of time. She talks about her husband who was inc incorrectly diagnosed at the hospital because they were only basing that diagnosis off of his vitals, like his blood pressure, weight, pulse at that moment in time, rather than all of the data that she had accumulated over months that showed that he actually wasn't at risk for that diagnosis. I will always remember how she encourages us to advocate for ourselves when we know our bodies, our businesses, our lives, because we're living in it every day. So she says, show me the data. <laughs> that concept speaks to me in the context of small business because on any given day, your bank account may be slim pickings. But if you were to go apply for an equipment loan, they would ask you to see your average bank balance as well as comparison income statements, tax returns, and schedules of assets and liabilities in order to determine whether you're eligible to finance that equipment. They're not simply looking at one moment in time. The story that your data tells is more important than the snapshot of any good or bad day. So when we talk about financial empowerment and having agency over your business and your life, that's what we're discussing. Whether you've got the record keeping to make informed decisions. If you don't know, you won't grow. That's all I have for today. Thanks for listening. Cheers.
If you are enjoying what you're learning on this podcast, please consider supporting me through a subscription on Anchor.fm. Any donation amount is welcome, or you can simply share it with someone you know. You can also follow me on Instagram at alleaseaccounting and sign up for my email list at alleaseaccounting.com forward slash subscribe. Thanks for listening. Thank you.